Yeah, I think that'll work. Hey, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. Those of you that have been here for a while know that I'm having quite a bit of trouble getting our Mitsubishi Fuso with the 4P10 engine to start. If you're new to this channel, well, this is our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso FG and I'm trying to turn it into an overland camper. Over the past couple of months, I've been pulling a lot of the parts off of my spare engine to help fix the fuel system on our truck. The CP4 fuel pump has been replaced, but injector number four has refused to come out. So what I've decided is for now, short term, I'm gonna put the system back together and make sure I have everything running. I still have plenty of time to go back and pull all four injectors out and have them sent out for testing. As you can see, the injectors are back in and I have removed the old fuel rail and lines. And I'll be replacing them with the fuel rail and lines from this engine. There's one more thing I'm gonna do before I even try to crank this engine over. If you have a Mitsubishi Fuso with the 4P10 engine and you live where we use ultra low sulfur diesel, make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss what I'm gonna do to this truck so you can do it to yours so you don't end up going through what I'm having to do. Before we dig into what I'm doing on the truck, I wanna give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on here. The Fuso 4P10, which is actually a Fiat F1C, uses a Bosch CP4 fuel pump. Now, the Bosch CP4 fuel pump is known for failures due to lack of lubrication. Now, this isn't really a fault of the fuel pump, but more the fault of the fuel. Ultra low sulfur diesel does not contain as much lubrication as regular diesel. But the fuel pump failing isn't really the cause of the headaches. As you saw in my previous videos, it's not that hard to swap out the fuel pump. The cause of the headaches is the fact that when the pump does self-destruct, it sends shards of metal through the rest of the fuel system and contaminates everything. So in trying to understand how and why this happens, I've done a bit of a sketch of how the fuel system works. You can see that the fuel comes into the fuel pump, lubricates the pump, and then continues on to go to the fuel system. This fuel pump also has a case drain, and any debris that comes from the grinding up of the inside of the pump continues on through the paths shown. This is not a problem that is unique to the Fuso by any means. The Ford, Chevy, and Dodge diesel communities have the same issue because they also use the CP4 fuel pump. And of course, when you get a widespread problem like this, somebody has figured out a solution. The problem is the 4P10 is definitely not a Ford, Chevy, or Dodge engine, so the off-the-shelf aftermarket solution for those trucks doesn't quite work for this one. So what I'm gonna be doing is modifying an off-the-shelf Ford disaster prevention kit to fit on our Mitsubishi Fuso 4P10. And of course, you know that I will put as many links as possible in the video description, so make sure you check it out so that you can modify the fuel system for your 4P10 before this happens to you. So what's in a disaster prevention kit? Well, there's a couple of key parts. This is a block off plate. This block off plate separates the fuel flow inside the internal metering valve. By blocking this internal flow path, we're preventing any debris from a pump failure from continuing through the system and to the injectors. All of the debris must now run out through the drain and back through the return. At the same time, we supply the metering valve with a clean fuel supply that comes from the line that's feeding the pump inlet, so all of the fuel going to the system is clean. The last thing we need to do is prevent debris from getting back to the fuel tank. So we have another fuel filter that we're gonna put in line on our return. This is a nine micron filter, so that any debris that does come out of the system gets filtered out before it gets back to the tank. Now when we follow the flow, you can see that only clean fuel goes to the injectors and any possibility of debris gets sent through the filter before going back to the tank. Now if the pump ever fails again, the only item affected should be the pump. That's smart. So let's start by getting the parts we need out of this disaster prevention kit. There's not really a lot to it. I've taken the T, I've taken the block off plate, and the 9 micron filter, and the head, and the mounts. Other than that, this kit is pretty much just hose. So if you're able to source this piece on its own, you can probably come up with the rest. And most of the rest of this kit is absolutely useless, and that's why it's okay, in my opinion, to go with one of the cheaper kits. The biggest complaint that I saw on the cheaper kits is the quality of the rubber hose, which we're gonna be tossing anyway. Why are we tossing it? Well, our configuration is different, and I'm adding in an additional piece of equipment, and that is a fuel pressure sensor. 
This will allow me to monitor the lift pump feed pressure in real time in the cab to know that I'm not starving the inlet of the high pressure fuel pump. So a very rough layout, this is the fuel inlet hose and it connects to the back of the CP4 fuel pump, which is the inlet. We're gonna take the small T and we're gonna change this hose to a T fitting. One side is gonna go back here where it originally goes. And the other one's gonna continue forward and up here, we're gonna place another T with the fuel pressure sender. Our fuel is gonna come in here, and then it will loop around out of the outlet T into the fuel block off plate. Now that should be providing clean filtered fuel to both the fuel inlet on the pump as well as the internal metering valve, meaning that our internal metering valve is no longer getting fed with fuel that's being used for lubrication. That's really smart. One thing I do want to stress, whether your parts have come from the highest of high-end manufacturers, you've had them machined at a local shop, or you've made them yourself, make sure you give any of these parts a really good clean before installing them in your fuel system. All of this stuff is downstream of your filter, so any debris that might be in here, if you don't clean it out, is going straight into your injectors which kind of defeats the purpose of this whole kit. Step one is removing the internal metering valve and inserting the block off or bypass plate. This is pretty simple. Just be sure that no debris gets in here when you open the system up and that you use the longer bolts to reassemble it. With the addition of the bypass block, the longer bolts are definitely a bit more of a struggle to get in, uh, especially the rear one. The front one's not so bad. But you're definitely going to want to try and find a super skinny ratchet like this. I haven't been able to relocate these, but if I can, I'll put a link in the video description. Otherwise, you might need a kind of long-handled Allen key with a ball on the end so you can get a little bit of an angle. There's not a lot of room in there. Now that we've got the bypass block in there, you can see where the clean fuel supply will go to the metering valve and then onto the pumping elements. Now you remember I said I wasn't gonna use the fuel line that came in this kit, partially because nothing's the right length and also I wanted to make sure that I had a very high pressure, good fuel line for this system. So this is what I'm using. There's a link in the video description if you're looking for it as well. And of course, good fuel line won't do any good if it's not clamped properly, so I've linked some clamps as well. I've never used these ones before, they seem reasonable, but time will tell. The first length of fuel hose you're going to want to cut is going to be 10 and a quarter inches long or 260 millimeters. It's going to go from the block off plate to the T. Now before I tighten up this clamp, I do want to make sure that this is assembled because I may need to rotate the fuel hose to get things to line up properly. But I've got all my clamps on, these ones are opposing. I've cleaned out all of this, and by the way, this is assembled with Loctite 567, not Teflon tape, because you don't want to have any pieces of Teflon tape go down through your fuel system. So that slid on there. These are going to come up here. We're going to get this roughly in place before we tighten anything up. So this is going to be sitting right about there. Before I can get much farther in this, I do need to remove the last piece of fuel line that I haven't taken out, which is the one that goes from here to here on the engine. If you're installing a kit like this before you've had a disaster in your fuel pump, you don't need to change this, but I do. Now these lines snake in behind the oil filter and then underneath a couple of things, then they come out on the back and they use a special fitting, which requires a special tool, which I didn't have, so I printed one. If you need one of these, take a look for the link in the video description where you can download a file and print it yourself. These fuel line fittings are on the end of these two fuel lines here in behind this pipe and they're virtually impossible to see, let alone get a camera in. So the way this tool works is you slip it down over top of the nylon fuel line and push it forward to release the clip. Once this is in place, you can pull the whole assembly off. After designing these tools in SketchUp, I've printed them on my Ender 3 V2 in PETG carbon fiber. They have plenty of rigidity and work exactly as they were intended. Note that the supply and return lines are different sizes, and interestingly, the Mitsubishi manual lists them backwards to what they actually are. Yeah, it took a bit of head scratching to figure that out, but by following the diagram and reading the markings on the pump, I have confirmed it. After the supply and return lines are disconnected, there are two 10 millimeter bolts on the back that hold the flange, that hold the fuel lines in place. I can now remove the oil filter housing and then pull the line set through. This is the easy part. Now the idea for the next step is where this rubber elbow comes down to the fuel pump inlet. 
we're going to be placing a T and then continuing on to the second T that we've already installed. Now the line that I have is slightly larger diameter than this, so I'm actually going to keep this section of line to feed the T and hopefully this section of line to go on the bottom of the T, but worst case I can replace the bottom with the new blue line that I have. And now for the hard part, getting the replacement lines back through this little passage on the engine is not so easy. Zero visibility, very limited space, and right at the tips of your fingers. You know, all the fun stuff. Now that I've snaked the fuel lines through and behind there and got the bolts in the back, I've connected the case return, which now is just the lubricating return. I'm now getting ready to fit the T into this hose, but I've discovered that my T is a little bit too long, so I'm gonna trim one of the barbs off. Now I have plugged this before I go to cut it, so I can be very careful that any debris from the cut does not go into the T and I will flush it out again afterwards. And then I can insert the T into this line and we can continue on with the blue hose. I've now modified my T so that one side is a little shorter to fit on the original hose. And I've actually discovered that the elbow, the rubber elbow that's original is an eight millimeter in and a 10 millimeter out. So the line coming out of here being 10 mil or 3 8 is going to go with the blue line straight down into the pump. The next piece of fuel line you're going to want to cut is going to be 2 and 3 quarter inches or 70 millimeters. Let me show you where it goes. With our modified T in place with the short end going into this hose, I've got that 2 and 3 quarter inch or 70 millimeter section of 10 mil hose or 3 8 coming off the top of the fuel inlet. I've got clamps on there and now Pulling this tape off, we can slide this into there and now tighten up this clamp underneath here. Now the third and final piece of hose, you're going to want about 9 inches or 230 millimeters and it's going to go from here and behind this pipe and down to there. Once I get that hose installed and tightened up, it's going to look like this. That's all there is to the bypass on the engine. Now I still have to make a bracket to hold this in place so it's not flopping around. As far as the fuel lines go, I still need to reconnect my fuel rail return and the injector return before I can put the fuel filter housing back on. I still need to connect the fuel rail to the injectors and the high pressure line from the fuel pump to the rail, as well as installing the return filter. So make sure you come back next time so you can see this all finished. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.